welcome to another thought for the day from the New Forest Fordingbridge team ministry and the benefits that goes across that Salisbury Road if you're living or imagining us somewhere between Salisbury and Ringwood it's the first week of a new year and we wish you a very happy new year whether you've been watching many times or whether this is one of your first visits to Thought for the Day which comes out at 10 o'clock each morning from the Team Benefis. I wonder what you've been doing during this past week of sort of getting over Christmas and then working into the new year. How much television or reading you've been doing, uh, whether you've been out and about for a walk or whether the weather's just not been good enough. Well, whatever you've been up to, we've uh, looked once again at uh, television, see what's on, um, quite a bit in the way of old films, but we tend to revert back to the good old uh, country file, uh, looking around the country at what's going on in the countryside and with our farmers and the great needs they have at the moment. And another one that tends to be around lunchtime or sometimes in the evening is Repair Shop. Have you watched The Repair Shop? When we used to live down on the south coast we travelled along once or twice to Singleton, the open air museum of which the repair shop is a part. But it's not so much the shop itself, it's the people isn't it? The people who actually do the work there, receive the visitors, find the things that are damaged or beyond repair and make new life out of them. While watching it the other day I picked up some of the words that either I or they would be using. Uh, words like repair rather than replacing or renewing. Quite often we have to do that. Uh, gone are the days when I'd sit down with my dad and we'd repair something at home, be it anything from uh, a kitchen utensil through to a bike or the car or anything like that. You could just go down the road and buy the bits and stick them in. I remember doing a toaster like that, must have been many years ago now because the one that's just defunct in our kitchen had the, had the age 1979 on it so we've been using it for a long time <laughs> and I wasn't in the business of trying to replace the panels that are inside a toaster of that age. Then a kettle went uh, and again I used to do the um, elements in, in a kettle without any problem but uh, nowadays decided to invest in another one. So things can be renewed and replaced and sometimes they can be repaired. But when I look at those people in the repair shop I see expertise. Each have got their own particular ability. They occasionally use each other. One working on electrics, another working on wood or leather or whatever it happens to be. And the two ladies from uh, Bewley who are working on the dolls uh, and teddy bears They've each got their expertise and obviously whatever the material a tremendous amount of patience is needed. Patience that might take much much longer than the glimpse that we have on the television program. So there's patience, there's expertise, there's sharing, collaborating together and recognising the skills that one hasn't got but somebody else in the room has got the skills. And at the end of the day, immense satisfaction when those people return and quite often burst into tears when they see a loved um, musical instrument, a teddy bear or, or whatever it was, restored again and they could recognise it and take it away. And that's the reward, the, the pleasure that is given to other people and their gratitude in something that you've achieved and the pride in that achievement. And I suppose the, the one thing in the Bible that reminds me of uh, replacing or renewing is the carpenter shop. Uh, maybe you've seen pictures of the carpenter shop over the years and you can imagine Jesus working there uh, in those hidden years um, between what I suppose 13 when he went up to Jerusalem for his bar mitzvah or the equivalent and um, then right through to the age of 30. We imagine that he was with Mary and Joseph for however long he lived in the carpenter shop and they would be working there as carpenters in Nazareth. Many people have speculated that they both worked together in the what was then the new Roman town of Sepphoris behind in the hills behind Nazareth. Um, we've been to both those places and we can imagine 
um, the activities that went on there when those towns were being built. And the word um, technon, which is uh, for a carpenter, can include wood and stone and indeed any other materials. So when you think of what is made out of wood, let alone the stone of houses and memorials and all the rest of it, um, in that time of uh, uh, Jesus' time there would be certainly boats on the Galilee, there would be furniture in the village, there would be doors and windows, um, and I can simply imagine, if you come with me, to somebody coming up to the carpenter's shop and saying, Joseph, Jesus, could you repair this for me? Look, my, my stool's broken, my chair's broken, the table's got a wobbly leg, um, the doors could do with a bit of attention, um, and the imagination can wander. Uh, how many uh, specialist people would there be earning their trade in a town such as Nazareth? Don't know much about the town, never mentioned in the Old Testament. Uh, suddenly comes to life when you think of the life of Jesus living there in the New. Uh, but there they are, the people that you could call upon. I imagine apart from the carpenter's shop there would be something like a blacksmith, uh, given the animals that were around and the metal tools that were around. So beyond that, um, and obviously shops where food was prepared or, or, or cooked, um, the carpenter's shop and the smithy would be part and parcel of the town. And in a sense that was tremendous for Jesus' background, the carpenter, the one who was going to repair, renew and replace and indeed build. All those qualities were there in Jesus' life. And God had it in mind right from the outset that people would need renewing, they would need rebuilding, they would need refreshing. and he was coming down to do something about it, uh, beginning in the life of Jesus. But we can go back further than that. You remember the burning bush? Remember Moses? Um, it's very special in my Bible, I've got it pretty well underlined. When God says, this is Exodus 3 and verse 7, if you want to turn to it. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I've heard them crying out because of their slave drivers. I'm concerned about their suffering, so I've come down to rescue them from the land of the Egyptians and to bring them up to a good land, a spacious land flowing with milk and honey. You, you pick out the activities that God is uh, mentioning there in, in that particular passage. I have seen. God was aware. He was aware of the broken nature of humanity exemplified in the people of Israel, God's people, in Egypt, and he was longing to bring them out to their, to their good land. I have seen the misery, I have heard them crying, I am concerned about them, and I have come down to rescue them. If that isn't an echo of what Jesus is going to do in the New Testament, I don't know what is, but it's a wonderful picture of God being very aware of the state of people, individuals and groups and society and coming down to do something about it, not just leaving them to get on with it, but responding to the need, just as Jesus and Joseph would have responded to the needs of the people in a very practical way in Nazareth. And I believe as Jesus grew up and got to the age of 30 or whatever, as, he, as his ministry began for three years, that he was exactly the same. He could hear people crying out in need those who suffered physically, those who suffered because of the Roman occupation, uh, those who uh, simply needed him and cried out for him. And he heard them and he was aware of them and he came down to do something about it. He was concerned, concerned enough to come down and rescue. And certainly as we, we delve into the New Testament, we're very aware of the, the teaching, the parables, um, the owner who sent slave after slave to the, to the vineyard to get the, uh, to, the, to get the produce and in the end sent his son. And it keeps on cropping up as a rescue mission, a reviving mission, a renewing mission. 
and all of that is there uh, echoed in the in the Old Testament to bring them up out of one situation into another and that's what God longs to do with you and me and as we start off in this new year um, we we need to put the old year behind us I think some I was reading this last week about elderly people and I count myself in that bracket that elderly people tend to look back and be concerned about or to worry about fret about and the Bible is constantly calling us to look forward yes there's been a past that's influenced our present but we need to look forward with hope into the future and we move forward into a world which does really need really need renewing and refreshing and rebuilding not just because of Covid but throughout the world there are nations and there are people that are suffering and we need to have a concern about that and do something about it because Jesus has done something about it and people long to know uh, about Jesus. I often think about the situation uh, between the different religions um, and there's no hope in any other religion other than that in Jesus. Jesus is the answer. It sounds very trite to say that sometimes. We want a more theological explanation of what's going on and what we can do about it. But in a sense, Jesus is there. He has come down and all he needs is for us to respond to his visiting and his coming down, his life, his sacrifice, his life that he gives us. We need to come to Jesus in repentance and faith. Repentance for the way in which we treat each other. Surely that needs repair. How we treat our world, that needs repair too. There are so many ways in which we're getting it wrong, but with Jesus we can get it right because he will give us the inspiration, the intuition, all that we need to learn how to get it right, to repair it, to renew it. Is there perhaps at the outset of a, of a new year a relationship that you have to renew? And you might say, well, a bit touchy, Michael. It's the other person, really. They've got to say sorry. Really? What would Jesus do? What would Jesus say? Wouldn't he say, take the initiative? Pick up your pen? Get on an email? Go and see? If you feel that there's a difference, a breakage between you and somebody else that needs repair, take the initiative. It's amazing how we do that and God's in there ahead of us. He gives us the words to say, he gives us the attitude to have that we might renew and refresh and repair relationships. He's the one who's come down, he's the one who repairs. I just want to leave you, moving out of Exodus in my Bible, to a little looked at book which is Ecclesiastes. Because I was thinking of this word broken and repair and uh, there it is. Uh, you'll know it when I say it from Ecclesiastes chapter 4 and verse 12. A threefold cord is not easily broken. That needs a sermon in itself but just a thought that sometimes when we get together as a threesome with a couple of other people uh, it's strong and it's a good relationship. Maybe you just want to sit and have a tea or coffee together or a meal together but maybe to pray together and we find strength in that as we have a relationship with other Christians. Of course we can do it in church but maybe there are times when we are outside church and away from church and that threefold cord is not easily broken. But take it a step further, maybe it's you and me and somebody else and God. Maybe God's the third person. The threefold cord God involved is not easily broken. I know when we were married we had to go out and uh, moment of getting an engagement ring and uh, we wanted a ring with three stones in it with God in the middle. That was the way we were thinking about it, that we would give our lives to Jesus afresh in a marriage relationship and maybe you did that when you were married. Maybe that has been broken through death, bereavement, um, but the relationship is not broken. We still think of our loved one 
and we think of God and how God is very aware of bereavement and loss. Or if you want to really put a theological stamp on it, you, you, tr you make it Trinitarian, don't you? A threefold call is not easily broken. Father, Son and Holy Spirit, the Trinity. You may think that's stretching a bit too far, this piece of string. But uh, it's how I s tend to think of things, that God is not just one. God is three persons, the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. It is we speak to God the Father through Jesus Christ our Lord. We are guided by the Holy Spirit and enabled and equipped for everyday ministry, whatever that ministry is in your individual lives. But we can be grateful for God. Look it up again and see what you make of it. Uh, from Ecclesiastes 4 and verse 12. We're going to finish um, in a moment with the hymn Beauty for Brokenness. That started out as the Tear Fund hymn to awaken us to the worldwide needs of people. And maybe it's this time of year as we start a new year and we think about what's going to happen in the new year. We need to be more aware of other people. I think probably as we as we have these thought for the days, we're, we as the people who take them, lead them and put the thought together, try to imagine the people who are watching. And I know it's people in and around Fordingbridge and, and our own benefice, but uh, people much further afield are watching as well. We've had responses from Europe and from Canada and so on. And we're delighted that we can talk to people in this way, but it's saying that we do need each other and we need to build relationships out of brokenness and bereavement. We need to repair and restore. So maybe as you uh, watch the repair shop in the future, you'll think about the other side of it, that there are things in our lives that we can restore. Sometimes we look at a, uh, for instance, you, you lift the body to the car and you think you can't do anything about that. You shut it again quickly. Gone are the days when dad and I repaired and restored cars. But some some things cannot be broken, cannot be restored out of being broken. And we have to recognise that. Time to move on. Time to move on into a new year. But let's go on in faith. Go on in hope. Go on with Jesus and think, what would he do in this situation? How would he help me restore, renew, replace in the days ahead? So Beauty for Brokenness was written by Tear Fund, uh, with Tear Fund in mind and its worldwide work and the way in which we can be involved in it. So please listen to the words, read the words again and take them to heart. Let's have a prayer together. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you know our state and you come down to help us, to guide us, to lead us into the future. You come down to restore, renew and replace and we thank you for that. Thank you that we can trust you for it. And we pray that in this year ahead, you will help us to know your presence, guiding and keeping us every day. We ask this in your name. Amen. So may the Lord bless you and keep you and guide you, equip you and enable you, restore you, renew you, refresh you, repair you for the year ahead. Thank you. God bless. Goodbye. Beauty for brokenness, hope for despair Lord, in the suffering, this is our prayer Bread for the children Justice, joy, peace Sunrise to sunset Your kingdom increase Shelter for fragile lives Cure for their ills Work for the craftsmen Trade for their skills Land for the dispossessed, rights for the weak Voices to plead the cause of those who can't speak God of the poor, friend of the weak Give us compassion
passion we pray melts our cold hearts and tears fall like rain come change our love from a spark to a flame refuge from cruel wars havens from fear Cities for sanctuary, freedoms to share Peace to the killing fields, scorched earth to green Christ for the bitterness, His cross for the pain God of the poor, friend of the weak Give us compassion, we pray Oceans and streams Plundered and poisoned A future and dreams Lord and the madness Carelessness, greed Make us content with The things that we need God of the poor Friend of the weak Give us compassion we pray, melt our cold hearts, the tears fall like rain. Come change our love from a spark to a flame. Lighten our darkness, breathe on this flame. Till your justice burns brightly again Until the nations learn of your ways Seek your salvation and bring you their praise God of the poor, friend of the weak Give us compassion Change your love from a spark